What's up guys, it's Coach Drew, and today I'm gonna to help you guys become better one-on-one -on -one players. A lot of you guys wanna win those one-on-one -on -one matchups, so I'm gonna teach you how to do different moves out of the triple threat, based on how the defense is guarding you, and different moves out of the live ball attack, so that ultimately you have a better, more improved one-on-one -on -one game so you can get more buckets. So right now, if he's forcing me to my weak hand, I'm a right-handed player, we always wanna have the ball protected and away from him. The first thing that we're gonna always try to do is basically stab this foot outside right here. If we notice that he's not reacting, he's not falling for the stab, we stab, we're gonna rip over top his hand, boom, put the ball down before we lift up our pickup foot and then get downhill. So our first one is just like this. I'm sitting there, I'm reading him, I stab, boom, now I'm over top, get downhill and make a play. Our second thing that we can do if he's forcing us weak hand is obviously he's not gonna let us consistently rip over top. So now again, I got the ball in triple threat. This time if when I stab, he takes that step. What I wanna do is immediately get into a rocker step where I load this back, boom, and then push forward. So just rock off that back foot, push and explode. So I'm right here, he's again forcing me to my left hand. So I stab this foot, he goes there, I push back and explode. Now, a lot of you guys are asking, why would you go backwards on that? And I want to explain it. One, it gets you in a more narrow stance so you can attack downhill. So if I go from this stab and he falls for it, and I go to a rip through, notice that I am attacking this way and I'm attacking the corner, whereas when I go backwards, I'm actually attacking downhill, which is what we want. The other thing is, if you know anything about explosion, if I'm in a wide stance, I can't explode as much and get my hips squared to the rim, which is necessary if I want to get downhill. Whereas if I take this loader step, it's just like a sprinter in the Olympics. They always start here because that's where you're most explosive and fastest. So that's why we get skinny, get narrow, got a better attacking angle, and we're more explosive. If he's opened up the other way and he's forcing us to our strong hand, now I've got the ball protected on my opposite hip. Notice I'm in a little bit more closed position because I never want to give him a chance to have the ball accessible to the defender. The first one I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna open up to him. Notice the ball is still on my hips. And if he doesn't react, I'm gonna use this hand to kind of push off and get downhill. So it's just like this. I'm sitting there, I'm kind of moving, I'm moving, open up, boom. Hand over top, I shoot the jumper or get downhill depending on what the secondary defenders are doing. Now he's obviously not gonna let us rip again. So eventually what he's gonna do is when we open up, he's gonna think we're going downhill. So I'm low right here. When I start to open up, I'm gonna stab this foot He's gonna cut us off. Now I'm gonna sweep through, and now I'm just gonna to try to beat this foot past this foot, and now I can still get squared and get downhill. So this one, I don't need the load step because I'm in a more narrow stance already. So I'm here, again, lunging forward. Notice my shoulders are almost over top of my knees, ball still back and protected. Then a slow sweep, beat him in that opposite direction, and finish at the rim. Those are the best four ways to score out of basically the triple threat if they're forcing you either way. Now, if a live ball situation right here, if he's forcing me where he's just kind of flat because he hasn't dictated an angle yet, I've got to do something to change his stance and his angle. The first way to do that is by floating. So I always want to get outside his hips. So if I drive at him and he's staying still real quick and I float this way, his stance is naturally going to float that way too. The first thing we're going to do is just do a little hip crank where I crank my hips, open up, and again, I want to get this hand off and explode downhill. So let me show that to you, medium speed. So I'm just jogging down, I open up, crank, and then go. So it's open up and then crank. Again, that crank is gonna allow me to get skinny. This hand is gonna allow me to smack off his hand if he comes into reach, and then we get downhill. Now if we do that a couple times and we constantly beat him with that, obviously then when we take this long step, he's gonna slide to cut off our angle and we're gonna be able to cross over and create space. So now I drive at him, I float, I step, he crosses, boom, I cross over. Now I have space to catch and shoot that knockdown jump shot. The other thing that we gotta do is if we don't like the float series, we can also do a jab at series. And so this one would look like this. I'm driving down and all I'm gonna do is basically while I'm dribbling, the ball's gonna hit, same time as my foot, and then I'm gonna stunt and then explode at reading him. So if I stunt and he slides and reacts to the stunt, I'm just gonna beat him in this direction. So if I drive down right here, ball and foot hit, and I stunt, then I can just explode by him and beat him in this direction. If again, he starts realizing that that's what I'm gonna do, this time he's not gonna slide this way. In fact, he's gonna slide this way to cut off my drive, and I'm gonna do a pro cross, not carrying, keeping my hand over top of the ball at all times, but I drive down, I skip, and then boom, over top crossover, 
and then finish at the rim. Those are eight things you can do to become a better one-on-one -on -one player out of both the triple threat and the isolation live ball attack. Master all late, and I promise you, you'll be a better one-on-one -on -one player in no time.